Hi, here we are back in Watford's fantastic pub, The Horns, um, venue two, of course. Um, we're indeed privileged to have with us Rick Butler of The Jam. Thanks for coming along, Rick. That's all right. Pleasure. Um, we're going to talk about uh, Mad Band Dangerous, the book of drummer's tales, and some other bits and bobs as well. Firstly, Rick, you feature in the book having been to a gig where um, uh, Buddy Rich was playing and there was a lot of people taking their shoes off. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, I mean, it was, um, it was a real privilege. A friend of mine, a um, bit of a mentor, was a great drummer and um, he got tickets to go and see uh, Buddy Rich and his orchestra here at the Albert Hall. And we, were, we, we got right at the front, which was fabulous seats. You know, we could see Buddy Rich you know, playing away. And we, you know, he's great. Drummers are great to watch because you can learn so much yeah. from what they're doing. Anyway, they've done, they done about one or two numbers. And the guy, I think, standing behind him was playing congas. And um, Buddy Rich actually got out of his, uh, got out of the kit, walked around, had a whisper in this guy's ear, and, he, and the guy was taking his shoes off <laughs> because he was tapping his foot. You could see he was tapping his foot, and it was it was obviously out of time with what Buddy Rich was doing. Yeah. And uh, so we all thought, you know, everybody sussed what was going on. Um, but of course, then everybody around us started taking their shoes off because I think the place was full of drummers. In Everybody was tapping their foot. <laughs> yeah, so just in case we were... In case he got told off by Buddy Rich. Well, yeah, we didn't want him himself. getting the wrath of this little... Because he was quite a hunchback yeah. guy. You know, when he stood up, he'd obviously been behind this kid yeah. for too long, you know, over the years. <laughs> There's a few um, themes run through the book Mad, Bad and Dangerous, so one of which is uh, this notion that uh, drummers might be a little bit mad by uh -huh. nature. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought about it like that, but I suppose so. I mean, it, it's for a start, it's, you know, hitting things for an hour and a half, you know what I mean? Really hard. <laughs> with, with, with extreme discipline and violence, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, do you think drummers do madder things when they're in their, you know, in their own time? Do you, do you think they do? I don't know. I, think I mean, like Keith Moon, of course, but yeah. I mean... You no, know. I think there was a certain reputation to be held up in, in, in the light of those sort of antics. Yeah. I so maybe there's some of that thrown in there that, yeah. that you know that's what you were expected to do because if anyone's going to be doing something a little bit crazy it all it's, seems to be the, the drummer yeah. i know that we, we were in a pub once and there was it was um there was full of judges and obviously these guys from the bar or whatever yeah and they were the most outrageous people in the pub yeah even though that you know there was there was us and a couple of other bands yeah. in this place uh it was the landlord he had to, have a, had to have a word with these legal beagles rather than than with the musicians because they yeah. were they were being they were being worse behaved than anybody than else. Anybody yeah, else yeah. in the pub. Yeah, so I don't know about. No, I think uh, everybody's capable of. Being Everyone a bit is, mad. I think. I think yeah. perhaps if you play, um, if you play drums, you're already being a bit mad anyway. So. Oh yeah, it's a great way of venting all this stuff. You just got to know when to put the brakes on. Yeah. You know, when you yeah. come off stage, you might be still in that mode. You know, it's like coming off the motorway and driving down the high street. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. Uh, that maybe we've got something to do with it. A lot of people in the book have given us examples of difficult times they've had while playing the drums. Anything like that happened to you at all? Uh, yeah, there's a couple of occasions. I think one time I had a car accident where I broke my right foot, just broke my ankle. So they oh, set yeah. that in plaster, and um, I think I was carried onto the stage because it was otherwise it would have taken ages. I'd have limped, limped so, onto the yeah, stage. Yeah, it'd have been a bit much that. So they, just for a joke, I think they carried me on. But I mean, I don't know if anybody, anybody tried to play drums with a plaster on their foot. It's, 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 no, it's not easy. It's was just, that the right foot, the yeah, bass drum foot? Yeah, it was the right foot. Yeah. How did you manage to get all that? that? Well, I didn't. You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it all went very troglodyte after that. You know. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, that was it. That was very frustrating. The show I must mean, was, go on. It was my own fault for smashing the car up. You know, but <laughs> just one of those things. I mean, the other, the only other thing is um, usually hangovers. Yeah. You know, when you got the first song of the day that you got to start recording. You tend to want to think, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make sure I get it in one take. Get it in one take. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't care anymore. You know, but I've got to get it in one yeah. take. And usually you do. It's in terms just... of thinking about playing, um, there's something in in the book which uh, is mentioned called muscle memory, which mm. is the uh, part of the brain's suite of tools which uh, allows you to um, commit regular function to memory, like say driving a car or cleaning your teeth or or whatever. Drumming is a bit special because you don't play the drums all day or, or at eight o'clock in the morning every, every day, you know. Sometimes I've had this, and I've spoken to other drummers in the book, and they've had it too, not all of them, but some of them, where you panic a bit, you think, hang on, what am I doing? How do I, uh, how do I play the drums? Is, is, what if mm. I can't do this all of a sudden? Um, yeah. And then you get this panicky feeling, you think, and then, and then all of a sudden you sort of... The thing, that, the thing that used to get me was knowing exactly where you were. You know, you, yeah. th you, you know that you were in this song somewhere, 
but you, like I say, you're still only thinking about it in little bits. Yeah. And yeah. that's really where you're focusing. But then something will say to you, are we in the second verse or is this the fourth or third verse? Yeah. Am yeah. I supposed to be <laughs> in a minute? Am I, and then it, that takes your mind off of, of exactly of what you're that, supposed, what to, be you're supposed to be doing at that yeah. moment in time because it's a very linear affair yeah. music, you know, it's, especially when you're playing it. Um, you have to think about it as in the now. It doesn't, yeah. anything that's happened in the past, yeah. forget it. Anything that's in the future, you're only worried about the next. So, in a sense, so where sometimes you, are, you end up with a blank that you think, yeah. Uh, so, in a sense, <laughs> where, where you are in the song, it's kind of muscle memory because you've rehearsed it. Yes. You know it's verse, chorus, verse, right, bridge, you, whatever. If you try and think, yeah. where am I on a slightly larger scale, and you suddenly go blank, yeah. you think, well, I'm just going to keep going. And somewhere, <laughs> somewhere... I'll get a clue from these other yeah. two guys that maybe, you know... And somewhere in the back of the mind, you, luckily it, it comes forward. It yeah. says, yeah, you were in the first verse, actually. Or, yeah. or, you know, I mean, luckily, but, sometimes you will get the yeah. clue, and you, yeah. you know, and it doesn't happen that often, but when it does, it is a horrible... And it's horrible always just thing. in time. As well, well <laughs> apparently, yes, time. that's right. The last thing, think, yeah, yeah uh, uh, no, we're not ending it yet, mm. or, or we've got to end it now. You and know. the odd thing is that sometimes when you have that happen in a particular place in a song, that's where it's going to happen again for some reason. You get this nightmare, we're like coming up to that bit in record. the song where, yeah, uh, and of course, that's you get flashbacks almost to. The last time you nearly screwed it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I suppose if you've got, like, you had a broken foot, yeah, then um, and it's in plaster, that's you're not going to panic, are you? Because your main concern is how you're going to get through that. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's, but it, but on the other hand, when everything is going well, yeah, and you haven't got any other concerns bugging you at all, yeah. it is tremendous. Ah, when fantastic it actually feeling. Yeah. All comes together. Yeah. But I think that's what makes it so nightmarish when when you get this. Yeah. block in the, in the block. middle of it, you know, <laughs> it, can, it can ruin your day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, what would you say is the most joyous moment of that? I don't know, I think that I used to enjoy like about halfway through when you've, you've, you really just work, you just got yourself all loosened up. Yeah. When you get close to the end, it's like, oh no, it's coming to an end. You don't really want it to because you, yeah. you've just got this thing going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, you're, and you're really in, in, the, in the zone, if you like, and then yeah. it's, it's come yeah. to an end. And it's, it's Do you get this thing where, if you, or in the days of the jam, when you came off tour, did you get this feeling of months of just sort of kind of bleakness because uh, you had to sort of live a different kind of life? I mean, it's certainly true that it, 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 especially with the jam, it was such a big part of our lives yeah. that everything revolved around it. Yeah. So when you were taking time off, it was only because you had nothing else to do. So yeah, it does become a huge part of your life. So when it's uh, when it's not there, yeah, you you somehow get through. We always found it was such an advantage to get away from each other to refresh ourselves by not being around each other. Yeah. If you know what yeah. I mean, because otherwise you just run out of things to talk about. Well, I heard, you know story, I mean? yeah, I heard stories of uh, bands who go on tour and uh, you burn out in that respect. But um, in the days of the jam, we were generally so busy. Yeah, that we never really had very much time to do that sort of thing because uh, there was the more successful you become, then the more demand there is upon your time, and the touring and the records and the recording, and yeah. it's a it's a wheel that just becomes bigger and st just rolls on all the time. So at the at the end of that, it was sort of a bit of a strange well, feeling. Was, I suppose. Yeah, it, it was just yeah. like suddenly everything that we'd lived for for the mm. previous ten years was just gone. So. It, I suppose it's akin to suddenly finding yourself unemployed. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, and almost unemployable. <laughs> <laughs> in a certain way. And you formed the band with Paul, didn't you? Originally. Yeah, yeah that's right. It was, um, Steve Brooks and Paul were, were going out as a, a duo. Yeah. And they had another drummer with them for a little while. And then I joined them, and then there was another guy called Dave Waller. Uh, and we were still we were doing the clubs as a four piece. Yeah. And that was a cover stage, wasn't it? With the, the, yeah, I mean, most of the stuff that we did at that Kings time was, was, was yeah. that's how we got our work because yeah. bands, you know, who played all the numbers that everybody recognised went down well at the workingmen's clubs and etc. the yeah. CIU clubs and that sort of thing. Yeah, and then Bruce came on board um, as a rhythm guitarist. All oh, right. Um, because Paul wanted to play bass. Yeah. Yeah, this old Hofner violin bass, which somebody promptly sat on in the back <laughs> of the van because he didn't have a case for it. And there was this horrible sort of splintering and crunching noise, you know. <laughs> and it's just, this thing fell in two bits, held together by the strings. But no, Paul didn't like um, singing and playing bass, so that was then a big changeover. Oh, well, and I um, see. Bruce was persuaded that, you know, you know if you're going to stay in the band, you've got to play, you bass. play the bass. 
So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and in those, in those days, of course, I mean, you were, as you said earlier, you were sort of known as the, the drinking band, you know. The, 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 yeah. It didn't sort of evolve into a druggy thing or whatever where, where you couldn't function or anything like that. So no, it was, uh, no. Well, there were times when we were just outrageously drunk and we couldn't perform too much. Really? You know I, mean? <laughs> but, I mean, never when it actually came to the shows. I mean, there were a couple of occasions when uh, one day we were, we, was, we were supposed to be doing a, a, a festival and I'd been particularly ill the day before and I woke up thinking I'm never going to be able to get myself through this gig. And um, as fortune had it, uh, it, the show got pulled because there was some argument over the billing, oh. which I was so pleased about yeah. because I couldn't, I couldn't even concentrate enough to walk, let alone... <laughs> You know, that was a hangover. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a very that's a very small word for what I was suffering from. But yeah, of course, that was back in the days when um, outrage was still pretty attractive. As a drummer, did you ever smash any uh, any hotels up or anything? No, like no, that? not really. No, um, did a couple of silly things. Um, with the vapors one time, we stuck all their clothes to the ceiling <laughs> with super glue while they were on stage. <laughs> so when they came off to get changed into their everyday clothes, they couldn't get them because they were, they were stuck nice on the high ceiling. ceiling. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What's we were nice guys, really. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it was all in good fun. Yeah, yeah. Anything awful really happened on stage with regard to um, the drum kit itself? Like, you know, um, um, no, I mean, I was pretty much looked after oh. in that respect, and uh, the kits always seemed to hold up to it. Yeah. Um, I, I asked a guy once for a towel, because um, you know, I'm sort of signaling to him, like, I want a you know, towel. And he comes over with a towel, puts it over my head, and starts <laughs> rubbing me like this. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> You didn't actually want to be treated as, no, a, no, no, as no, I did not, someone who's just been wrestling. Yeah, just lean or it boxing. there, do you know what I mean? <laughs> of course, you can't stop, you can't, you know. No, no, you're playing and he's just... And you can't even talk to him, you know, you no. can't even say, do you mind stopping that? Please? So he can carry on doing that as long as he wants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm doing my job here. Yeah. Clearly he wants his, his head massaged with a towel then. <laughs> well, he was new to the game, you know, obviously yeah. thought that... Because, you know, I was obviously getting sweat in the eyes, and if yeah. you get sweat in your eyes, it just stings, really you just can't yeah. see, and yeah. it's really quite horrible in that respect. You know, you could obviously see... He, he picked up on that part of it, but he didn't pick up on I'm still playing. Yeah, <laughs> still trying to play the drums. <laughs> yes. Live, in front of all sort, lots of people. Yes, that's fine. Oh, <laughs> rub this guy's head with his towel. So, Rick, what are you up to at the moment? Um, at the moment, I'm, um, I'm managing two or three acts, really. Yeah. Um, I'm a girl called Sarah Jane. Um, young girl, 16, writes her own songs, plays guitar. Yeah. The other was the um, another a lo local band uh, called the Brompton Mix. Similar sort of thing, really, just getting them some shows. I threw them in at the deep end, if you like. Yeah. Um, got the, uh, a, the support slot with Stiff Little Fingers down in Southampton. Yeah. And uh, which was a great experience for them. Yeah. And they really went down well. You know, they got a great review afterwards, and um, and I, I think that they learned a lot from that sort of thing. We did a similar thing. Uh, with the jam years ago, we supported Thin Lizzy. Um, uh, we were thrown in with this huge crowd. First time yeah. we sort of played with 2,000 people or something, yeah. and it's like, oh, you know. <laughs> but this is, on the other hand, you feel like yeah. you've arrived, you know, because it, it's, it's, yeah. it's like a baptism almost. Of, yeah. know, um, Rick, Mad, Bad and Dangerous. Oh, yeah. What do you yeah. think? No, it's good. I mean, I, I'm not a great reader myself, <laughs> but it is the sort of book that you could just pick up and browse through and just start halfway through and read bits. Um, especially if, you know, if you're into bands and music, it's just ideal. Um, yeah, no, I would uh, rush out and buy this if I were you. <laughs> <laughs> if we do another one, Rick, would you like to uh, put another story in there? Have another story in there? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, if, if, if I, have I got many stories left? I don't know. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll make something up. <laughs> make something up, yeah. Rick, thanks for turning up today. That's a pleasure. Great to see you Cheers, again. Mike. I can go home now, can I? <laughs> <laughs> no, you've got to stay and get drunk. <laughs> oh, damn, blast. <laughs> Leave the car in the car park. <laughs> Mad, Bad and Dangerous, available on Kindle and just reprinted, so back in stock everywhere. I've got to check my hair again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to that camera, aren't I? Yeah. Well, of course, I'm not going to be. <laughs> you rolling? Oh, yeah, yeah. We never stop, we never stop rolling. You silly. Got to catch all the action. Right, carry on. Good to see you. Come on in. Blah, 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 bl
you know, but <laughs> just one of those things. I mean, the other, the only other thing is um, usually hangovers. Yeah. You know, when you got the first song of the day that you got to start recording, you tend to want to think, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make sure I get it in one take. Get it in one take. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, yeah. I don't care anymore. You know, but I've got to get it in one yeah. take, and usually you do. It's in terms just... of thinking about playing, um, there's something in in the book which uh, is mentioned called muscle memory, which mm. is the uh, part of the brain's suite of tools which uh, allows you to um, commit regular function to memory, like say driving a car or cleaning your teeth or or whatever. Drumming is a bit special because you don't play the drums all day or or at eight o'clock in the morning every every day. You know, sometimes I've had this, and I've spoken to other drummers in the book, and they've had it too. Not all of them, but some of them where you panic a bit, you think, hang on, what am I doing? How do I, uh, how do I play the drums? Is, is, what if mm. I can't do this all of a sudden? Um, yeah. And then you get this panicky feeling, you think, and then, and then all of a sudden you sort of... The thing, that, the thing that used to get me was knowing exactly where you were. Uh, I think that everybody's capable of... Being Everyone is, mad. I think. I think yeah. perhaps if you, play, um, if you play drums, you're already being a bit mad anyway, so... Oh yeah, it's a great way of inventing all this stuff. you just got to know when to put the brakes on. Yeah, and when you yeah. come off stage, you might be still in that mode, you know. It's like coming off the motorway and driving down the high street, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that maybe you've got something to do with it. A lot of people in the book have given us examples of difficult times they've had while playing the drum. Anything like that happened to you at all? Uh, yeah, there's a couple of occasions. I think one time I had a car accident where I broke my right foot, just broke my ankle. So they oh, set yeah. that in plaster. And um, I think I was carried onto the stage because it was, otherwise it would have taken ages. I'd have limped. Limped so onto the stage? Yeah, it would have been a bit much that. So they, just for a joke, I think they carried me on. But I mean, I don't know if anybody, anybody tried to play drums with a plaster on their foot. It's, 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 no, it's not easy. It's was just, that the right foot, the yeah, bass drum foot? Yeah, it was the right foot. Yeah. How did you manage to get all that? that? Well, I didn't. You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it all went very troglodyte after that. You know. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, that was it. That was very frustrating. The show I must mean, go on. It was my own fault for smashing the car. Uh, Buddy Richard and his orchestra here at the Albert Hall, and we were we, we got right at the front, which was fabulous seats. You know, we could see Buddy Rich. You know, playing away, and you know, he's great. Drummers are great to watch because you can learn so much yeah. from what they're doing. Anyway, they've they, they done, they done about one or two numbers, and the guy, I think, standing behind him was playing congas. And um, Buddy Rich actually got out of his, uh, got out of the kit, walked around, had a whisper in this guy's ear, and, he, and the guy was taking his shoes off <laughs> because he was tapping his foot. You could see he was tapping his foot, and it was it was obviously out of time with what Buddy Rich was doing. Yeah. And uh, so we all thought, we all, we all, everybody sussed what was going on. Um, but of course then everybody around us started taking their shoes off, because I think the place was full of drummers. And everybody was tapping their foot. <laughs> yeah, so just in case we were... got told off by Buddy Rich. Well, yeah, we didn't want him himself. getting the wrath of this little... Because he was quite a hunchback guy, yeah. you know, when he stood up. He'd obviously been behind this kid yeah. for too long, you know, over the years. <laughs> There's a few um, themes run through the book Mad, Bad and Dangerous. So one of which is uh, this notion that uh, drummers might be a little bit mad. By uh, nature, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have thought about it like that, but I suppose so. I mean, it, it's for starts, you know, hitting things for an hour and a half. You know, what I mean, really hard <laughs> with, with, with extreme discipline and violence. You know, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, do you think drummers do madder things when they're in their, you know, in their own time? Do you, do you think they? Do? I don't know. I think. There I mean, was like Keith Moon, of course. But yeah. I mean, you no, know. I think there was a certain reputation to be held up in, in, in the light of those sort of antics. Yeah. I so maybe there's some of that thrown in there that, yeah. that you know, that's what you were expected to do. Because if anyone's going to be doing something a little bit crazy, it all it's, seems to be the, the drummer. Yeah. I know that we, we were in a pub once and there was, it was, um, there was full of judges and obviously these guys from the bar or whatever. Yeah. And they were the most outrageous people in the pub. Yeah. Even though that, you know, there was, there was us and a couple of other bands yeah. in this place. Uh, it was the landlord. He had to, have a, had to have a word with these legal beagles rather than than with the musicians because they yeah. were they were being they were being worse behaved than anybody than else. Anybody else, else in the pub? Yeah. So I don't know about. Hi, here we are back in Watford's fantastic pub, The Horns, um, venue two, of course. Um, we're indeed privileged to have with us Rick Buckler of The Jam. 
Thanks for coming along, Rick. That's all right. Pleasure. Um, we're going to talk about uh, Mad, Bad and Dangerous, the Book of Drummer's Tales, and some other bits and bobs as well. Firstly, Rick, you feature in the book having been to a gig where um, uh, Buddy Rich was playing and there was a lot of people taking their shoes off. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, I mean, it was, um, it was a real privilege. A friend of mine, a um, bit of a mentor, was a great drummer and um, he got tickets to go and see 